um, I'm assuming your father came from money. Did your father come from money? That he had oh, the money to spend? My father came from money. Your father? But his father was addicted to the stock market and the futures, the cotton futures. And he wouldn't, when the, when the, when the, the 29 uh, depression came, he wouldn't sell out. And he kept putting more money in it. He'd lose it. And my grandmother had to go to the oldest son, James Junius Johnson I, and get him to go in and stop the investing of my grandfather. And he did. And he saved the family. And that he was a broken man after that and faded off into the sunset. So um, my father came out of a tradition of compulsive gamblers. And I, I swear to God, I was there and I got vaccinated by my uncle. That uncle took my lunch money. If I bet with him, and lost. It wasn't any. Hey, I'm sorry. I don't. I won't. Won't take the money now. He took the money, and I hurt. And he said, "You got to understand that you can lose, and if you can't afford to lose, don't bet." And I. I'm not a. I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a compulsive gambler. But I can go to the racetrack and make a living. And I can. And I can handicap horses and handicap all kinds of things. I just ain't gonna bet the homestead on that shit. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, and that's what my mother did and she never got there, never, never got to that point. And it was, she was broken hearted, I think. I mean, we had, we, before it was, uh, we had three television, black and white televisions stacked upon each other watching the football games and stuff. Always betting, you know, bets going on, point spreads and all. I mean, we grew up with that, that whole, whole thing. I mean, I still go, if I want to really, really go see the, the games and without actually going to the games, you go to the sports bars and the hoot and the hollers and, packed to the wall and, uh, you know, and all that stuff, so uh, I, st I still do that. I was 14 years old and I had my uncle that come to visit, to live with us. He, his name was uh, William Leander Johnson. He was a black sheep of the family. He was a professional gambler. And he was having a conversation with my mother and I could not understand what the hell they were talking about. And the conversation was something like this. Mickey, you're going to have to get Doc, little Doc, who was my father, to bet with me because we need to keep the money in the family. And I just couldn't understand what they were talking about. And it was a very honest position my uncle was taking to try to minimize the negative impact of the compulsive gambling thing. And then I later, he basically taught me the difference between what a compulsive gambler is and what a professional gambler is. And it's basically the professional gamblers don't have to gamble. They don't have a compulsion to gamble. They're investing. And what they want to do is they want to gamble, they want to bet on, a, on situations that they can wind up winning both bets and they can't lose.
And that perception about that whole role of gambling, whether it's in the horse racing, football, business, up on the, when I watch the collapse of the economic system and it end of the, it, and it, it's, you're talking about people who are ruthless gamblers and wheeler dealers and greedy and they they hawked their grandmother you know for for a buck or and and that's what America is built on and and we worship it I mean greed is good and it, it's it's ugly I mean on a worldwide basis with everybody pursuing their own vested interests they're not not everybody's going to benefit that's a fun, that's a false prophet speaking. I mean, Adam Smith basically argued that everybody pursue, pursuing their own vested interest is going to benefit everybody in the long run, and I, I just don't. I think that's a crock of shit. Jeremiah and I were partners. Uh, I was the farm manager. He was uh, working at the. Uh, on the newspaper in uh, Hot Springs, he was a night editor, and he worked handled the money, the books. The other, the other two brothers were hired hands, and I, I worked them to day and worked them. I was, you know, I, I was a plantation overlord. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 I think it, if you ask my brothers, they said I, I was well. Uh, uh, there's a little little Jimmy Johnson, uh, picking, doing hip hopping through the daisies, and there's. Uh, Mr. Johnson, the businessman, and then there's the ramrod, so there's a wise man, I think, somewhere in there, and then there's the ramrod son of a bitch. Well, the ramrod son of a bitch, when you needed him, could step out and, I mean, scorch the earth. <laughs> Dragon tongue, and to this day, if you ask my wife, Malia, she is terrified of the ramrod son of a bitch and uh, she does not like him when he comes out and so he he doesn't come out very often I I'm, you I've 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 I've, 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 I've st it's still there and you and you need to know it's there but you just it's it's you know you just you know, you know one of those little deal that little deal that you open the top and the, the guy pops his head out, you know, and they, they keep the cop going. On. <laughs> so that's the way I do with the ramrod, you know. Give, give a little peek there. And <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Would they would they then fight about money and and what were some things oh, it that was always it was always an issue. And he would, uh, he would persuade all the boys in the family that uh, you guys are living a good life and I'm bringing home the bacon and everything. I just want to have my little fun over here and it's not going to hurt anybody. And we bought into that. And my mother was isolated and had no, no leverage. She, her leverage would have been a divorce, and that this wasn't going to happen. That this wasn't going to happen. Not in that day and age. No, no, not not Catholic. from where she, that, as Catholic as she is. And uh, then my aunts wind up marrying people that, well, two pharmacists. And uh, their their relationships were not happy, and 
that, and those were my, my mother promoted those marriages, and and uh, it was it was it's hard to it's hard to look at this. It's hard to. I mean, this is not an easy thing to sit down and talk with you about that. I, I boy, I must have a hell of a lot of trust in you as a member of the family, and hopefully. This may this message will filter itself down, so to speak, and be helpful for people getting a perspective of where they came from and where they're where they're going.